Hello friends. So I did manage to actually fix a little bit of the greenness um, that this camera seems to produce. And I like this color a lot better. Um, this is going through OBS though. So my zoom uh, stuff is not gonna get that. So office hours is still gonna make me look a little green, but eh, it's fine. I'm actually way happier with this. So this is very good. Um, so what I'm working on right now is not Epic Web. Um, it is the blog post that I want to write about the memory leak that um, I had to deal with in the last little while. Um, and yeah, it's we're gonna be taking screenshots and, and stuff, doing a number of things. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna watch me uh, write a blog post about um, that. And if you don't think that watching me write a blog post is very interesting, then I don't blame you. Uh, feel free to go to another channel and watch that instead. Uh, okay, great. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is make a post, new post. And this uh, title of this post, what is, um, um, how I found and fixed a memory leak. Um, yeah, huh, it's really, that, that's, that's more like the description. The title would be like fixing um, a memory leak in a production Node.js app. All right, how I found and fixed a memory leak on kentcdods.com. Uh, this would be best category for this. Uh, no. No, it's not like a performance thing. It sort of is, but like node. Uh, performance, metrics, uh, production, um, node.js, um, memory leak. Yep. Uh, okay, unsplash photo. This is always the hard part. So I'm gonna move this over here because when I unfocus this, it's supposed to stay up and it is. Um, but sometimes it doesn't, it's really annoying. Uh, I used to have it just open up Unsplash for me with a search pre-filled based on the title. Uh, that did not, uh, that sometimes would make the window go away. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, memory leak, leak. That's probably okay. That one's pretty good. Um, or it could be, what if we do um, spillway. Um, cause it was not quite like a leak. It was more like, ah, this is awful. Uh, okay. How about uh, waterfall? That's interesting. There's a watermark on that. Unsplash plus. Oh, I see. That one looks nice. I like that one. Um, that one's also nice. Ooh, that's cool. I like that one. Yeah. Okay. Of my options, not that one. Uh, that one's cool. That one's pretty. That one just looks awesome. We're going to go with this one. So I just paste that in here. And then it... it uh, <laughs> actually finds uh, it uh, scrapes the ID and the alt and the author. So that's cool. And that's actually the main reason why I use that prompt. Um, also, like it creates this file for me, which is kind of nice and sets the date and all that stuff. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Uh, okay, cool. So one other thing I just realized that I need to do, start up centered so that I don't forget to take breaks because I will. Um, I also like the chill music that's going on in the background when I go with centered. So I'm going to change the music though. We're going to go with Sonic Caffeine. There we go. And we're going to be working on a um, blog post about memory leak. All right. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, 
Um, I ignore YouTube chat. You're welcome to chat, but I ignore the YouTube uh, chat because they have a bad moderation um, system. So instead, find a link in the description to Discord, and this is where we're chatting today. Okay. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Cool. Um, one thing I wanted to do is if we go to KCD metrics here, we look at the last two days. Um, so it's been hovering around 500 uh, megabytes for a while. Um, it is, it, it does look like it's sort of going up, but it goes up and then it comes back down. And um, I was told by Mateo that it's going to hover around, um, around that, like it's pretty normal to, to go up and then um, come back down and that's, that's fine. Um, but also V8 is going to fill its container, basically. It's very uh, aggressive with uh, taking as much memory as is available. So um, I'm going to scale down to, uh, I don't know if I want to scale down to 500, but let's try it. I don't know. See what happens. 512. Scale now. See what happens. Uh, if we look at monitoring and metrics, I think it should restart my app with that. Yeah, their Tailwind, uh, they use Tailwind on fly. Um, they have uh, a problem with uh, order of classes. I think they like split up their Tailwind into multiple files, which don't do that. Just put it all in one, one CSS file uh, because they have a conflict here. Okay, yeah, we got a restart. Yeah, see, this is the way it's supposed to look. Uh, so with that restart now, let's see what this looks like. Yeah, eventually this graph should change. I'm not sure how it will look different. Hmm. Here, let's just make sure that, uh, I mean, we're getting logs, so it looks like everything's fine. So. Getting a bunch of 404s. Oh, image social, yeah. Um, I moved from that slash image thing yesterday in, in the live stream. So we're gonna get a bunch of those coming from various like Slack and Discord and stuff like that for a while. That's not a big problem, but yeah, it is gonna be an annoyance. Yeah, looks like things are running fine. I just, there we go. That's what we're talking about. Holy smokes. Yeah, V8 really just eats what is available. It's like, oh, you got two gigs? Let me take a half a gig. And I'll just grab onto that. Because anytime I would make a heap snapshot, I never got over uh, like 260 megabytes was the biggest uh, amount of uh, memory that I ever took. But like, I would spike over two gigs, so that was super weird. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is very interesting. Also interesting that it says mem total is 472.8 uh, when I'm saying I want 512. So that's weird, but um, yeah, this is great. If I can live within 512, I'll be very happy. And I, I should be able to. Um, I do have stuff in LRU cache. Um, I don't think I have that much though, certainly not. I, I wouldn't even expect I'd have 10 megabytes of stuff in LRU cache. Um, so all, everything else is in SQL, uh, SQLite. And so, yeah, that should all be fine. So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna stick this down here. I'm gonna um, pull up a Twitter um, thing here. Yeah, where's it at? Around 200 megs? Yeah. I 
um, what is, I'm trying to say V8 is, I'm um, a memory hog. <laughs> uh, okay, so I wanted to grab a couple of screenshots that I sent. Let's see here. I guess I only sent one of any particular interest. Okay, save image. This was um, um, uh, two spikes. Okay, sorry. I I. It's just kind of rude to share um, um, DMs that people weren't expecting to be public. So I'm. That's why it's over here. So you'll see it here in a second. Uh, the particular bits that I think are relevant. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna save that. Okay, and Yep, okay, I think we're I think that's everything that we're gonna get. Oh yeah, here. Uh, I should probably hang on to that. Uh, I'll get my own screenshot of that, I think. Okay, cool. Sweet. All right, yeah, look at that. I think V8 is just like, what is half of the memory that I have available? I'm going to use that. Although with two gigs, it was only using half a gig, so maybe not quite, but yeah. <laughs> my goodness, this is crazy. I just, I, I got my app from using, um, like spiking out at two gigs down to half a gig and now down to a quarter a gig of memory. That is so nice. I'm very happy about this change. Oh, that's so nice. I wonder what was going on then. What happened at that time? Okay, let's get started on this post. Um, I need that. A few, uh, when was that? Yeah, a few months ago, I wrote about my migration from Postgres to SQLite. And that's blog. I ended that with a to be continued because I, uh, there, you know what? Uh, well, yeah, that's fine. I had a number. Hey, it's Jamin. What's up? Yo. How you doing, Jamin? Here. Chat is over here. Join us in chat. It's great. Yeah, some uh, hardcore memory leak nonsense going on here. Um, of issues related to memory leak and CPU or memory and CPU spikes that I couldn't really explain. For a while, I thought it was bugs in LightFS, which I'm using to get distributed SQLite for my distributed node app. Um, so I removed um, LightFS. Um, no, I didn't, I actually still running on LightFS. 
So I tried removing light FS, or tried, so I scaled down to a single region and even removed light FS for a while, but the problem persisted. So I knew it wasn't light FS, it must have been something else I did in the process of the migration. There was quite a bit. Uh, there were quite a few changes that happened there. Um, I'd like to, uh, yeah, okay. Just gonna check this out. Yeah, Shiki was one of the culprits. Yes. And uh, it'll be interesting from, uh, I'll explain how I um, dealt with that. It's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, keep those meetings off of Friday. I actually just moved office hours from Friday to Thursday today because um, things are always going on on Fridays that I, I'd rather do than um, regularly scheduled meetings. So that um, I can get behind, Jamin. Cheers. Good luck on the podcast. Um, after um, spending several hours on, after really luck, spending several hours on this over the uh, I'd rather work on epicweb.dev than my personal site I finally figured out what was wrong and I'd like to whoop, to tell you about it. All right, let's, here's what I'm talking about. And let's get a picture in here and let's start the dev server also so we can look at it when it, um, when it's ready. So, uh, actually, you know what? I probably got uh, Twitter, uh, Memory leak, can't see that, it's photos. I can't, I, I remember doing this loom. Hey friends, so my website has memory issues. So um, I recently did a really big re-architecture of how things work and yeah, very clear memory leak going on here. And then when it maxes out, it also spikes the CPU as well. So like things aren't going great on kensydots.com right now. And I'm not sure exactly why. I, I have some suspicions. I switched from Postgres to SQLite. I don't expect that to be a problem. Uh, but I, I think I might be able to just share this link to... as it is. And it might just embed uh, if it implements the standard for that. Um, blog or localhost blog. Oh man. Hmm. Yeah, it's not not dealing with that. So, um copy link now embed download. Here we go. Oh, it's four minutes. I don't want to. I don't want to host that. Um, I'll put that on YouTube. Besides, I might actually delete this because I don't have a paid account on Loom anyway. Uh, so we're gonna upload this to YouTube. Upload. Okay. So this is uh, memory leak issues. Can't see the odds.com memory link issues. Boom. All right. I 
posted this on Twitter. Uh, when was this? December 6th. For more info, see this, except it's not available yet, but it will be. Should I make it unlisted? No, that's fine. All right, now, unable to watch, it's unavailable because <laughs> I forgot, I just rickrolled myself. Uh, locally, I mock out that request. Um, yeah, let's see. How can I force this one to skip the mock? I'd like to be able to do that. Um, hmm. Like it would be cool if I could say mocks false. And then for it, that specific request, uh, it skips mocks. Hmm. That would be, uh, how would I do that? It would have to be some sort of global thing that's set. Um, so let's go mox index. I should probably fix that. I think that I could do this. Um, server dot close and then server dot listen again pretty sure that I could do that so then I could say global um, mocks um, is there a server dot pause no. yeah I guess not server events on Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so let's do global um mocks disable um or pause. Resume. Yeah, let's just return now. Yeah. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. Um, let's see, uh, Prisma server, just grab this declare global nonsense. I think this will work. Um, can I do like type of global? Max. <laughs> the type is is the type that it is. It's probably yeah that yeah that makes sense. Uh, all right, how about this? Max uh, handle. Take that. Global. Max. There we go. Okay, so then in my um, 
index uh, server thing. I can just have if process in v mox is true, then app use rec res next next. And then um, where's the unfinished? This will work. So unfinished. Say if um, rec dot um, URL search. Hmm. Do I ever parse the rec URL into? an actual URL. No, that is not the rec URL. Yeah, the rec URL I don't think has all the stuff. It's kind of annoying. Uh, I do just need the search params though. Um, rec params, is that search params? If rec, and let's just add a, a console log. Oh, we want to do next either way. Rec params. No, that's um, yeah. No, that's the wrong params. Uh, rec URL. Original URL. Hmm. Search. Um. Let's console log that. I think that's just the search string, which I might be able to parse, maybe. There, let's go. Uh, Mox. Um, false. I've got too many console logs. Uh, Oh, no, that's interesting. Oh, hold on. I think Mox is true, though. Oh, it's undefined. That's interesting. Uh, where's my uh, dev? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. I do this differently. Whoopsies. We're going to say Mox true. Because my um, yeah, index.js if mock's true. So yeah, we can get rid of uh, that. And actually we can get rid of that too. Okay, cool. So start this over. Uh, oh, whoops. Yeah, that used to be useful. It's not useful anymore. Oops, there we go. Okay, cool. So then, function search. Oh, it's a, s a function? What? Uh, huh. Express rec um, URL search. Hmm. 
request that URL. Oh, okay. Uh, huh. Okay, sure. All right, so if it has mocks, um, False. Then we'll say uh, global mox pause. And then on finish, resume. Yeah, I'm sure that's. I don't think you have to return anything from on finished. Yeah. Okay. There, let's go into here. I think it would be sensible to have so a log. Um, Mark server paused. Resumed. Stick those below, actually. It makes more sense to do it that way. Okay, and boom. And actually, we want fresh also. Hmm, interesting. Paused and resumed. So that's, that's all very interesting. Um, let me think here. Yeah, I'll get rid of that. Try this again. Huh. Ended up with 404. How did we up end up with a 404? Who threw the 404? Um, that would probably be the blog slug. No page. Hmm. I'm not sure this code is needed anymore. It might have been needed once, but I don't know if that's needed anymore. Hmm. Oh, I know what's going on. Ah, uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. So what's happening is we're saying, all right, MSW, you pause. And then it's saying, all right, let's get a fresh version of this. 
we're actually hitting GitHub's API and saying, hey, go get me the files. It's like, I don't have any blog posts because I haven't pushed this blog post yet. Dang it. Uh, so it's not quite this simple. I mean, this is probably still helpful, but um, and I'll probably keep it around. Uh, but we need something a little more um, granular. Um, I think I need like a unmock and then name of different providers, YouTube, comma, Twitter, comma, whatever. Let's see about that. Um, handlers. Yep. Handlers to pause. If there's not handlers to pause, then we'll do the simple thing. This would be, um, yeah. Um, I can't remember the difference between reset and restore. Man, I wish people would use JS doc. Uh, MSW. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Marks all one-time use handlers, removes any. Yeah. Um. I'm kind of thinking we should change this and say server.use handlers and then um, we say in pause Here, actually, you know what? Let's do handlers with names. And then Oh, dot let. Okay, and then what? There we go. Why or undefined? 
That's weird. Oh, or yeah, that makes sense. Um, and um, yeah, this is gonna be an array. There we go. Let's do that. So we're gonna say, um, um, handlers to keep will be, um, the handlers uh, object that keys of all the handlers and yep, filter out those. Hmm, that's annoying. Yeah, object.keys is super annoying. Um, so then we've got our handlers that we want to keep. We say server reset. I can't, I can't remember. Is it reset or restore? Marks all one-time use. Oh, it's the once. All right. All right, so yeah, reset. And server.use. Um, yes. Paused and oh, handlers to pause. Oops. And then here we're going to server uh, reset handlers and yep, there we go. Cool, so now when I do this, uh, it didn't say it paused anything. So, and it didn't, so that's good. Mm-hmm, yeah, uh, okay. I think if we have mocks false, or if we don't provide anything, uh, the default should actually be um, object.keys, should be all of them. Okay, all or handler keys. There we go. So now with this as the default, if you say mox false, it will unmock everything or it should pause, should pause everything. Hmm. Oh, it's time for a break. Now, I'm not really writing a blog post, am I? Um, handlers, uh, Okay. Paused. Not paused. Yeah, we paused them all. Good 
tried pausing, but no handlers um, specified. Okay. And a question about my 3D assets for my site. No, I did not create these. You can check out the credits to see all the people who helped in building my site. It's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to take a break and, uh, yeah, just get up and walk around a little bit. So see you in about five minutes.
let's keep this going. Uh, so yeah, things are looking pretty good. It did uh, take a little bump up, but I am pretty confident we're going to stay at around a quarter of a gig. We might get up to 300. We'll probably get up to 300, but I would be very surprised if we got much higher than that. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, this hey friends. should be so there now, and it should be. That's the highest quality, huh? Jeez, that does not look good. My website has memory Man, loom. issues. All right. So, um, I recently did a really big re-architecture of how things work, and yeah, um, I have taken a snapshot of my site running in production. Um, there it is. I, that I did it right F when I deployed, and then that I did one it, of them. Um, was a big one. A couple minutes after. Um, but it was it not the reason that memory. memory kept climbing. And then climbing. I'm doing a comparison between it just um, was the really big. after and before. I, I, and at least I think here maybe it was the thing one of the reasons. Taking most uh, markdown. Um, and then this has a pretty big retain size. So this is an underscore cache thing. Um, Shiki, which uses this. Um, there, um, all over the place for um, the stuff that we're downloading from. So any tips or advice or um, things that you could suggest? Anyway, that's cool. So we will have that. And hopefully in a moment, I'll figure out why, <clears throat> even though I'm saying these are all paused, they don't appear to be pausing. Let's print those handlers. See what happens. I probably are gonna, I'm gonna be annoyed by this too. So, server close, and then listen. And what are my options here? Bypass. And then here, server close, server listen again with this I don't think the order really matters but I could be wrong we are getting this warning um, so there's that okay let's go to the github handlers Getting SHA for GitHub. Winner repo. Whoop. Why do I, oh, cause I decode that. Okay, that makes sense. Hmm, I wonder why. Oh, that's right, I make the SHA be the path to the file. Yeah, because I do funny things. Okay, let's try that. Hmm. All right, if I don't have this. Hmm. It could be. Huh, interesting, maybe cash fresh.
Oh, that's right. My bad. Back up, back up. There we go. Okay, cool. So that's exactly what should happen. So now I come over here. Uh, first of all, I want to make it so that it doesn't give me all those errors. Hmm, I thought doing it on unhandled request bypass, it would, we got warn error and bypass. Well, those errors are really annoying, but whatever, it's fine. I don't care that much. So the last thing then is to make it so that I can specify. Mocks. Mocks. Um, false defined otherwise um mocks split by that if not mocks return Hmm. Yeah, okay. There are two problems here. Um Should be undefined. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, as undefined or array uh, any. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, so that would be yeah, hmm. Map filter boolean. Mox to disable. And here we're going to just go with. Um, an array of strings and we're going to say map. Uh, what does flat map do with undefined? Uh, hold on. Oh, that's... Yeah, then we... Yeah, it'll end up with an undefined, which I suppose use can accept. No, it's not going to like that. So we will say filter boolean. 
Okay. There we go. That is the way it should be. And now, if I say mox false, hold on. Whoops. I don't know if I, yeah. I think I want to rename this to pause mox. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So that way I can just say pause mocks and it will pause all of the mocks for everything, uh, which means it's going to, um, I think I'm in a bad state here. Try that again. Hmm. Weird. All right, let's start that over. Hmm. Uh, okay, I know what's going on. Return right here next. Um, so here, what we're going to do instead is that. That's what I was doing before. There we go. All right, so now I can say um, pause mocks and fresh, and it pauses all the mocks. Hmm. Oh. Oh, yeah. Um, not equal to null, or I'd say type of pause mox string. There we go. That'll do it. So now this will pause all of the mocks, and we're going to get a 404 because we're going to go talk to GitHub. GitHub's going to be like, I don't got this. So perfect. And now I can say pause mox GitHub, and it will only pause the GitHub mocks but it does not pause the other ones. Um, it still gave me a 404 though. I'm not sure why it gave me a 404. Because that should have... Here before we should have, oops. Oh, I forgot I was printing those. Okay. Close on that. Let's get rid of this. Um, print handlers. Well, sure, we'll keep them around. Save that. And then I hit this again. Pause Mox GitHub. And then Lumbed, Twitter, YouTube, we got Mox for all these things. Tito, Transistor, Discord, ConvertKit. Simple cast, cloudinary, mailgun, gravatar, and local host, huh? What is that for? Um, is that a catch all? Did I have a catch all or something? I just let everything go. Oh, that's right, because I'm my app makes requests to itself. Those 
Was it miscellaneous? Should probably have Cloudinary and Mailgun be separate. turn those off for specific requests. This is pretty handy, actually. And Gravatar Handlers. Local Host Handlers. And then um, Verifier Handlers. And now we don't have hand, uh, miscellaneous handlers. Codinary, mailgun. Come on. You know what I'm trying to do. Okay, anyway, uh, I'm not seeing GitHub in here, so I, um, oh, wait, yeah, I'm, I'm pausing GitHub, and so, yeah, okay, no, what I want to pause is, uh, YouTube, now, uh, or Oembed, that's what I want to pause, I want to pause Oembed, boom, this will work, no, Can you hear the vacuum? I think you can hear the vacuum. Sorry about that. Or sorry if it bothers you. I'm grateful that my wife is doing it. Uh, GitHub, Twitter, I'm not seeing O embed in here, so it is, it is paused. I am uncertain why we're getting a 404. Whoops, that's definitely going to be. Ah, now that's interesting. Hmm. Let's try this print handlers after resuming. There's the shop for GitHub. There we go. Huh. Yeah. And pause mocks. Um, oh, I'm bad. Hmm. Yeah, so it looks like pausing mocks at all seems to pause them all. Somehow. This is all synchronous, so it shouldn't be a, like a timing issue. Still got GitHub, but it's, hold on. Yeah, that's up here. Yeah, there's GitHub. But we're not actually, uh, it doesn't look like we're actually calling GitHub because it should be saying getting SHA for GitHub. So it is making the request. Hmm.
Huh. If I turn this off now, will it work? Or do I need to restart the server? Yeah, so it looks like once I say pause, it just blows up the handlers forever. Somehow. Uh, but until I say pause, everything works. They're not paused. So there's a really easy way to do this and uh, to do what I'm trying to do. And that is literally just to, oh, here, let's not forget that. Um, that is literally just to come in here and be like, oh, I want to disable O embed for a second. And boom, now I'm done. All this work that I've been doing is worthless and maybe that's what I should just do but yeah it would be nice if I could pause this but yeah you know what I think I've spent too much time on this already so we're gonna stick that in my clipboard in case I change my mind and we're going to get uh, check out mocks um, yeah there we go just undo all that work uh, we'll actually do the same thing I'm just gonna stick this in my clipboard in case I decide to change my mind and then we'll come oh yeah yep and then we'll come over here you say oh embed you're disabled for now run this and there we go it worked yeah that's maybe what I should have done from the start hey friends so my website has memory issues so okay let's just proceed with that um, fix me um, re-enable o embed handlers that I have configured to be a lint error so that I don't commit this um, so, uh, say, great. Um, recorded and posted to Twitter um, on December 6th. All right, and where's the tweet? There's a description. Can you get the description from here, or do you have to go to YouTube to see the description? I think you do Here's, have to go to YouTube. So Um, hold on a second. Ooh, yeah. I just had a thought. I think that I hit this op uh, O embed thing like a lot. Um, yeah, I probably hit these URLs like a ton. Where's this? Do I cache this? Hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. I use uh, a package that I made, uh, Remark and Better. I can't remember if Remark and Better is gonna cache this. I think it might. Providers, yeah, it does have a cache. Yeah, it doesn't appear there's any way to clear the cache. Who wrote this thing? Oh, yeah, it was me. I wrote this thing. Okay, well, 
It's fine. I'm sure it's fine. This probably doesn't get an update very often anyway, so. Okay. In fact, it doesn't get one, and I only care about these ones. I probably should um, include something for uh, um, for code pen too, but yeah, it's fine. Uh, okay, cool. So let's continue writing. Um, Um, so, so here's what we're dealing with. And I've got this. I'll show you what I've got. Cloudinary upload. The script kit thing is amazing. If you don't know what this is, go Google script kit. It's awesome. Uh, go up a directory and we're going into content blog and uh, fixing, oh right, uh, create new directory. Fixing a memory leak in a production node.js app. And then choose this directory and I'm gonna drag in, oh, you gotta be kidding. What? That's annoying. Drag a couple of these. Uh, probably want to title this one. Um, post um, memory leak. Uh huh. All right. So those are some. I do not want to rename them. And when they finish uploading, they all get copied to my clipboard. And I can just stick in the two spikes. I would regularly have spikes of, or um, pretty much every, after every deploy, memory would slowly increase until it hit a critical point and then it would spike along with a huge spike in CPU usage during, uh, during which time my app um, struggled to keep up with the um, requests. Um, often people would visit uh, during um, these spikes, people would visit my site and it felt pretty quick but for some reason, the static assets wouldn't get served properly. And um, yeah, well, sometimes, but not everything worked quite right. I got a lot of, or, mm, of complaints about this. It was really annoying. Um, to get a sense for what this site is, um, take a look at the video I had made when I launched it. Introducing, can't see it Read more about the features here. And read more about the 
launch architecture here. Architecture at launch. Uh, modern website 2021. Now that you have, and you can check out my um, site's um, usage analytics here. I normally get, what do I normally get based on this? Oh, that's what I get for having a, another browser tab up there. So if we say um, uh, this month, or let's see, last month. Last month probably isn't very representative because Christmas kind of messes things up. Um, Yeah, that's, what if we do, let's do November. Yeah, so it's normally a quarter million views. Uh, it used to be half a million, but then I stopped blogging. Kind of need to blog. So I'll just say, I normally get around a quarter of a million views a month. So now you know this. Uh, here, let's see. Um, site scope. The, um, the problem. Now that you understand the, the scope of what we're dealing with, not your typical blog. Folio project. Here's what we're dealing with. I paid thousands of dollars for this video. How many people have watched this? How much money did I pay per person who watched this? 10,000? I don't I don't remember exactly how much I spent, but it's I think it was something like 50 cents of you. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to tell you how much this video was. Um but I can tell you I spent a lot more than 50 cents a view for this video. <laughs> Gosh dang it. It's a cool thing. It's a, a legacy item. Um, uh, that's funny. Uh, that was nice. Thank you. Okay. Well, whoops. And this site was so cool. Yeah, this video is really cool. Actually. I'm really glad I got this video.
Yeah, that's rad. Yeah, still love that. Anyway, that should give people a good idea of what um, what to expect there. As far as the scope goes, this should have turned into the image itself. Oh, no, it shouldn't. No, that's right. Um, we do have to imageify these. Um, okay, so um, what is this? This is a yeah um, mobile screen shot of uh, or yeah screen shot of the fly uh, metrics UI on a mobile device showing. Um, what is it showing? Two graphs, uh, two firecracker graphs, one for load average and one for memory usage. There's a clear spike, or there are two clear spikes um, of each. Um, and it looks not so good. We're going to go with that. Let Cloudinary think about that for a second. There we go. Those uh, giant spikes of memory are actually when I tried to do something about the problem. Um, but I'll get to that in a minute. Thanks, Copilot. That's pretty good. Um, the main issue is once that CPU uh, usage starts getting out of hand. Um, So, the first thing I unfortunately, well, yeah, the first thing I tried diagnosing the problem. First thing I tried was um, keeping uh, saving logs um, to a file on my laptop so I could review them to see whether there was anything that triggered the spikes. What did I run? Um, it was on the other computer, so... Um, dang it. Okay, I'll be right back.
I decided to take my break since I was um, away. Yeah, I was one minute away from a break. So this is the command that I executed. Um, I would run that, leave it running, because I never knew when the spike uh, would happen. I would just run that uh, on a computer in my bedroom and leave it. They don't need to know it was in my bedroom and leave it running. Um, and then review it after the fact. Yes, I know that I could maybe should uh, pipe those logs to some other service or something, but this is my personal website after all. I want to do as little as possible to keep it running smoothly. <laughs> Unfortunately, when the spikes did happen, I couldn't determine anything out of the ordinary from the logs. I added a ton of logging. I tried adding a ton of logging and well, I even added server timings, which to almost everything, which is pretty cool. Pop <laughs> open your network tab and check it out. Here, let's do that. Um, Why can't I make this wider? That's really annoying that I can't do that. That's definitely too wide. Um, shrink that down to a reasonable size. I think kind of like it's resembling a square. Oop. Okay. This is server timing. Come on, where are ya? Quaternary, and this is where we're at. Server timing. Whoopsies. Server timing, um, Chrome Dev Tools. This is probably, yeah, that's good. And 
and server timing output or uh, UI Chrome showing a bunch of times for retrieval from caches, data retrieval from caches, rendering, etc. Okay, Coolio. I could do a light mode version of that. Should I? Mm. I don't think it would be worth it. Mm. But we're going to do it anyway, just because it's fun. It's like a little Easter egg. Oh man, that took forever. Try that again. There we go. That's better. Server timing light. Dark theme. All right. And cloud and area upload. Choose this directory. Server timing light is going up. And now we have themed actually I think I've got a themed image or hmm. okay um Themed blog image, there we go. Just a little nicer API here. Primary ID is that. And actually, I think this I want to take off the .png or .jpg so that it chooses the format most appropriate. There we go. Now check this out. In light mode, it looks light. In dark mode, it's dark. I think that's pretty sweet. I'm not going to be able to do the same for some other things, but can for this one. Okay, cool. Unfortunately, the logs were not helpful at all. So I decided to try uh, going deeper. Heap snapshots. I've diagnosed um, memory issues in uh, browser apps before with um, the Chrome Dev Tools heap snapshot uh, uh, memory tab and I knew it was possible to take heap snapshots uh, probably, what is a heap snapshot what do people call a heap snapshot Wikipedia heap snapshot okay define heap snapshot 
or let's just look at uh, Chrome Heap Snapshot. Heap, yeah, I think that's two words actually. Some snapshots are um, files that describe everything that, um, yeah, it's currently in memory. Um, the Chrome Dev uh, Tools Memory tab has support for um, explore, taking and exploring for creating, exploring heap snapshots. And I've diagnosed memory issues with that before. To create heap snapshots, um, and load those into Chrome. So I decided to give that a try. Um, Unfortunately, um, you're pretty limited on um, um, how uh, it can be pretty difficult to interpret heap snapshots. As noted in my video above, I could easily see um, a few, um, few pr problematic, um, but it was a challenge to find what trigger, yeah, was causing. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, now I need to bring up one of those heap snapshots and take a screenshot of something there. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Load. Boy, I don't know which one of these heap snapshots is going to be useful, so we're just going to copy them all to my desktop. Let's go with really big one. Yep, there it is. One thing, um, um I noted in the video above is I would take a snapshot as soon as I open or started up the oh actually let's first talk about how I created the snapshots to create a snapshot in node I started with the um, npm heap snapshot I think that's the module um, nope, not this one. 
think it's called heap dump. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is the one. I'm pretty sure this is the one I used. Um, let's see if I tweeted about it. I think I might have tweeted about it. Hmm. I suppose I did not. Uh, let's look at my GitHub history. We'll go back. Um, yeah, around here. Look in the package JSON, and I believe we'll find it in there. Yep, there it is. Heap dump. We started with the heap dump package before realizing that this functionality is built into Node.js. Um, now I have a resource a remix resource route. That um, creates and downloads the resource uh, heap snapshot for me um, and heap snapshot here's the whole thing it's actually the one thing you need to know about this is that um, in, well, in order for the heap snap, snap shot to be created, node basically has to, um, it needs to, uh, is that it is synchronous and also quite slow. This is required because other, um, you basically need to, oh, actually, also, you need enough memory on the um, server. Um, let's see, you need twice as much m memory on the server as what is being used because um, to make a snapshot, you have to make a cop um, V8 needs to make a copy of everything in memory to save it to disk. This is why you see those giant spikes um, in the screenshot I showed above. That's the moment I took a heap snapshot from my phone. Often when this would happen, it would result in an out of memory error, which is sometimes what I was trying to intentionally do to get it to restart. when I was away from the keyboard. Oh, and notice also the
bit there. That means only I can create those. Please don't bother. And this by all path um, copy relative okay all right sorry just realized I've got buzzing in my pocket Um, that, um, there was clearly an issue with a module. Oh, I got to take this phone call. This might be a couple minutes. We'll see. See you in a bit.
Here we go. Sorry for that extended break. I may get another phone call that I need to answer uh, later too. But oh my gosh, I'm so happy with the fix on the camera that I made um, through OBS. Uh, the green is like gone and it just looks so much better. Whew. Good job, programmers who do stuff like that. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Uh, with a module called uh, VS Code, yada, yada. Check this out. Okay, now we got to find that in heap dump right here. Now he saw something. that I do not see in here. Hmm. Yeah, uh, he sent me a screenshot of that, I think. Maybe I'll just use his screenshot. I wanted to make my own. There it is. There it is. Heap F32. Okay, so let's resize this uh, to a reasonable size. Here, let's just pop this out. Uh, move this thing over. Okay. that up. Okay. Where is that screenshot? There it is. Okay, this is heap F32. Okay. Cloudinary upload. Upload that sucker. And um, for the yeah VS Code should I do a light mode of this? I'm not. I'm not going to do that. That's just that. It's uh, it's not that hard. I'm going to do it. <laughs> post uh, or heap F32 light. Okay, so this is um hold on a second. Okay, good. Um memory tab of the Chrome Dev Tools showing a summary of a heap snapshot with an array buffer. Highlighted and an object called 
keep F32 selected M constructor selected and object called yeah. that has um, a retained size of one two five nine three one one three zero. That's an array buffer bytes or binary data bytes um, that is over 125 megabytes. Something is definitely wrong. When I saw that, that I didn't know what was wrong. Um, but I definitely knew something was up. Um, I had you know, that tweet that I mentioned earlier. I think I had a reply on that. My friend Ryan. Um, That packet or module is used by a module called Shiki. Yeah, let's put that Twitter thing there. Which um, is used, which I use in a uh, rehype plugin to um, add a syntax highlighting to all my pretty tags in my blog posts. It works really well and I'm happy with it. However, um, but apparently it's a bit of a memory hog. My friend Ryan also uses Shiki. I borrowed my plugins implement implementation from him and suggested I upgrade the package. I did so and it seemed to help a bit but didn't solve the problem. So after a while, a uh, um, I, um, my friend, Mateo, uh, got his last name in my clipboard. Yep, there it is. Um, Twitter, Mateo, nope. Yep, there he is. Offered to help me debug here, and actually, I could probably find the tweet. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, I should probably reference that. I didn't know this originally, and it kind of freaked me out. <laughs> oh, and it 
turns out that after V8 takes that memory from your uh, machine, it keeps it. V8 is what you might call a memory hog. A pig. A really big one. Okay, so that's that. We go and, and we should be. Um, I gave him access to the heaps shots and he uh, looked through them with me. One thing he noticed right up front was the typed array allocation was nuts. So I'm going to get a screenshot of that. Typed arrays light and dark. So after um, the images upload, my script um, opens uh, Cloudinary at the folder where we uploaded them to, and that's kind of annoying sometimes. Um, this led him to the um, Heap F32 object um, we discovered earlier, and in the stream he showed me where that comes from. In VS Code, um, whatever, um, where was that thing called? I can't ever remember. And now we're going to go find it. Oh, where was that? He found it somewhere. And we should be live. Oops. Hi, everybody. I Hello. Am... Hey, I'm joined today with Riguma. Just a second. And I am uh, it wrong. It must have of VS Code on mm. on. In this is a people have fun doing other work. I don't know. So um, okay. So okay. So this is a problem, right? So let we have a terminal. It's in the built code, not in the source code. Try grep. The minified. Do, 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 do. It's 
a wasm thing. Um, in the stream, he showed that VS Code on the Garuma has the ability or has an API for disposing of the type um, um, for cleaning up and cheeky may not call that appropriately. We didn't go too much deeper into this uh, because I, I'm going to say I didn't because that just felt um, like more work than I wanted to do. And instead, we decided that um, I could put Shiki in a worker thread that could be um, spun up and down on demand. whenever I need to compile a new blog post. Um, I think it's important for you to, actually, you know what, that should probably be part of the scope one important thing for you to know about my blog is that the blog posts are uh, written in Mark or in MDX and compiled with um, compiled at runtime with MDX Bundler. I do it this way so I can change a typo and have uh, can update a blog post like that typo and have um, the post updated in seconds um, without having to redeploy my site. But as you'll soon learn, oop, that um, most people uh, don't do that and instead have um, uh, compile their blog posts. Yeah, I should probably linkify MDX. Um, at build time so they don't run into the issues mm. you're going to find that uh, my problems um, yeah so uh, they don't typically run into the problems I do. Keep that in mind. Also useful to know that I have 200 blog posts on this site, um, plus a number of other content pages that are written in Markdown as well. Okay. Um, can I, um, hmm. How do I, no suggestions, but can't I like add that to my spelling? 
Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, okay. Okay. That's the main takeaway. Uh, oh yeah, there was another, um, another thing Matteo noticed uh, or realized while we were streaming is that um, when MDX Bundler finishes compiling my MDX. Uh, the result is code that um, React code that needs to be evaluated to generate the blog post. Um, um, so I uh, so MDX bundler <coughs> gives a handy function for that called, uh, let's see, um, MDX TSX, get MDX component. Which um, accepts the code string and returns a component ready to render. Well, this is what it does. Uh, let's get the source code for that. Um, yeah, client, here we go. That is not the thing I wanted. I guess I want both of these things. Now let's just copy the whole thing. Here, let's get the line highlighted too, so people know. Um, there we are. Line 31. I think that does it. I can't remember. <laughs> nope. Ah, shoot. Um, uh. Hmm. Maybe that broke. Dang. Um, how to use React context effectively. Let's look at that. Uh. Oh, that's working. Hmm.
Hmm. That's working there. Something is up. There it is. Okay. I don't know why that didn't work before, but it's working now. That's right. New function. Basically, eval. No, it's not evil when used correctly. And this is a good example of the correct usage. Just don't let um, users, con your app users control the code, right? or that other users are um, evaluating. Anyway, um, what's happened? Um, um, one um, reason this is an issue here, let's actually Highlight this. Um, I'm going to title this differently. Um, So after the stream, I implemented tiny pool, tiny pool, um, my shiki usage in tiny pool, like so. Um, The min threads and idle timeout were critical to making sure that the um, a worker would spin down when not in use so that memory could be reclaimed. 
I realize this is just sweeping the problem under the rug, but I am have only got so much time to dedicate to my personal website. So, okay, then uh, what was the other thing? Um, uh, eval is you caching eval. Is because every request that comes in for a blog post results in triggering this code and um, which means uh, V8 needs to compile uh, that string of code um, and potentially that could hang around. I didn't verify whether this was a true memory leak, but it's certainly suboptimal. So I implemented a simple cache. And that cache looks like this. before Using LRU cache uh, to make sure this thing doesn't grow too big, but I expect never gets um, more than a few hundred entries anyway. Okay, and then after the stream, we realized another thing. Not quite finished. After the stream, I am um, with Mateo. I impl implemented the fixes and deployed. Unfortunately, the problem still persisted. Mateo and I both um, looked at the uh, latest heap snapshots and uh, to verify Shiki wasn't causing issues. It wasn't in there anymore. Um, and Mateo noticed I had a bajillion strings in memory. Um, I also, I looked into those and found a lot of um, strings related to request 
uh, to express requests and cloudinary. And now we can look at that. Um, let me find the, actually, you know what? It's probably somewhere around here. Yeah, let's add, load another snapshot in here. Here we go. Uh, yeah, you all can see this is fine. Um, and I need to make this bigger. So lots of code. You're going to find that in your stuff. There's all the request stuff. And it's going to take a while um, to get to this. Unfortunately, I don't think they keep your focus. You click on this, and then the focus disappears. So that's annoying. So it'll take a while to get down to the There's content security policy stuff. Yep, I remember seeing tons of that. I'm pretty sure um, we will have that resolved with this uh, change that I made also. Those were probably hanging around because of this problem. We're almost there. I think another four or 500 more. Here it is. Yeah, we're starting to get to some of those. There we go. I want to get to where it's just like a giant block of only that. All right, that's good enough because I'm going to shrink this down again. and cloudinary strings and let's do before I forget light theme okay And then he also sent me a screenshot of something. I want to see if I can find TLS. Yeah, TLS. Okay, TLS connections. Okay, and I need to sign into this actually. Because I uploaded his screenshot, but I like mine better. So let me just log in there really quick and delete that before uploading the new one. <laughs> there we go. And then Cloudinary. Oh, come on. Cloudinary, choose this directory. And we've got the Cloudinary strings and the TLS connections. And no, we're not renaming any of these. Hmm. Okay. 
So now, where's my themed blog image stuff? Okay. Oops. So this is our uh, cloudinary strings. And Mateo told me, th uh, uh, told me he found a bunch of a ton of TLS socket connections as well related to Cloudinary as well. And this is TLS connections. Okay, and we come over here. I need to fix my thing so if there's an extra line, it just removes the line because that's kind of annoying to have that extra line on all my code blocks. I don't like that. Okay, there we go. And light mode images look amazing also. I hope somebody appreciates how awesome I am for doing light mode images. It's kind of curious why the background is that color. Do I set that background? Yeah, I guess I do. Yeah, I should get rid of that background. Hmm. Let's go to that themed blog image. Okay. Transparent background. Okay. There we go, and then in my blog post. Okay, I've got to make sure I fix the alt here as well for both of these. Okay, so this one is, um, Actually, it is, they're both the memory to have a Chrome training summary of a heap snapshot with a lot of strings related to Cloudinary and with a lot, um, a filter on TLS um, showing a lot of TLS socket um, objects. Okay, cool. So now, hey, that looks much better. And these dark mode will probably look better too. I just never noticed or something. Okay, cool. 
Okay, gonna take my break now. See you in five minutes. Yeah, see you soon.
All right, we're back. Things are still humming along. It's going up and down. So that like it's kind of stabilizing at around a quarter a gig, which is nice. It's really nice. I'm really, really thrilled. Okay. So uh, one thing I forgot to mention, um, <laughs> during the stream with Matteo, um, we tried to reproduce the problem locally using a module he made for load testing called auto um, no, auto, uh, cannon. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, um, this is necessary because, um, Problems like this typically only happen when you um, got a lot of traffic. Um, so auto cannon will just fire a silly number of requests at whatever URL you point it to. Um, so you can simulate production uh, load. Unfortunately, we didn't uncover much more. So Then he noticed I was using Express, yada yada, yada whatever it's called. Where is it? to proxy um, my OG images for blog posts uh, for all my pages. I did this, uh, this a while back because um, the transform uh, URLs for Cloudinary to generate those on the fly is quite long and I thought it would be better to just um, have a simple URL that I could proxy uh, to my own domain and then proxy that to Cloudinary. Uh, 
that is worded funny. Um, Turns out this module was leaking like crazy. Um, and probably hanging on to every request object that came in through it. Mostly that's Twitter, Discord, etc. So it's not a ton of traffic. Uh, have their own caches but it's enough and those objects are quite large my solution was to just remove the proxy and um, use the uh, longer uh, URLs. Poof. So um, after a day of my site uh, stabilizing, stabilizing at about 500 uh, megabytes, why doesn't it have suggestions? I'm confused. It should have a spelling suggestion. It's annoying. Uh, of memory, uh, usage, um, I think we're finished with the memory leak. Mateo suggested that um, I could probably scale down and not experience any issues because V8 um, pretty much takes all the memory you give it even if it doesn't really need it like I said a member a pig so I've scaled it down from 2 gigabytes of memory to 512 megabytes and check this out okay Uh, actually, I think I already uploaded this. Um, uh, you know what? Uh, let's get a fresh screenshot of that. Okay, something is not happy. We're going to close this. We're done with those. All right. Uh, Sheesh. Yeah, heck with that. Just do full, full width. Good grief. What's going on? And I'm going to delete that one. Upload this. They don't have a dark mode, so we're just going to have the one. Uh, 
an screenshot of Fly's metrics dashboard showing two firecracker charts to the left um, over um, two days. On the left, you see a memory and CPU spike. And on the right, you see a, oh, in the middle, you don't see anything maybe because you're blind and so you don't see and that's why you're reading this. Um, there is a memory and CPU spike in the middle. Um, things have stabilized. Um, I don't know how to spell stabilized, apparently. Stabilized. Ah. To um, about 500 megabytes of memory and stable CPU usage. And on the right, there is a sudden drop of um, memory allocation to 512 megabytes and the usage is around uh, 250 megabytes. I'm looking forward to this two day um, view to no longer have those CPU and memory spikes. That sudden drop is when I scaled um, in memory down to um, 512 megabytes. I'm not sure if that's a coincidence. Yeah, no, I know that's whatever. Um, and now my um, app is sitting happily at 250, around 250 megabytes of usage. I'm um, really excited to finally close the book on this one. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, trying to deploy to multiple regions next week so we can make this site lightning fast no matter where you are in the world. I hope this post was helpful to you. Big thank you to Mateo for all the help. Okay, cool. Kind of thinking I don't need all that. I think I just need this. And you know what, while I'm here, I may as well see if I can figure out how to get rid of that um, dangling line at the 
end of those. Um, maybe. I've got an idea. What if we did? Um, last. No, that went away. I don't know how to do this. Okay. So we're in pre code span code block line last child. No. Here we go. And CSS selector for empty um, element. Empty. Is that a thing? Yeah, okay, cool. So if it's the last child and it's empty. No, rats. What if I delete this? Or. Um, so it doesn't have before anymore? Hmm. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, where is it? Scroll into view. Where are you? There you are. Okay. Okay, so now will that show up with empty? No, it doesn't. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Huh. These two are considered empty. Interesting. I wonder what that's for. Oh. Huh. Where'd you come from? I wonder why that's there. But why is this one not considered empty? I don't understand why this one's not empty. Um, is it empty now? Weird. Why is this not empty? Well, boo on you, but that's okay, because I pretty much can guarantee that the last child will always be empty because that's just the way that it works. So I could just have a CSS thing that hides it. That was kind of where I was going with that. I don't want to do that though. I think I'd rather have something that gets rid of the extra line Remove empty last line code blocks. Hmm. 
uh, this file is crazy slow for TypeScript because um, the unified ecosystem is nuts about um, how it works with TypeScript. And we are looking for um, the same thing that I do in here. TypeScript is still trying to figure out what is going on in this file. Uh, okay, then console log pre node. Prettier is complaining about what? Okay, I'm I'm missing something. I'm I made a mistake somewhere. Not sure where. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Let's get our last child, pre-node children. My goodness, my computer is freaking out. Ah, I don't know how they operate with such crazy types. Okay. Um, oh, actually, yeah, the it's the first child um, this will be if first child tag name sorry one second kids ever they're awesome ah, being a dad is fantastic uh, okay so if the tag name is not equal to code then return and then oh I think he thought of one other thing you wanted to say I guess one second I think he's pulling my leg. There comes a time where you're like, no, dude, I actually do need to get some work done, please. Let me do my work. Um, okay, so this could be undefined. Uh, yeah, that's because I messed that up. Yeah, we could actually just do this. First child, there we go. And now you're complaining because, wait, what? Pre-node could be any, I don't think so. Pretty sure it's not gonna be any. Visit tree element, pre-node. Hmm. Not element. Uh, 
Okay. Last line. Free node or first child. Yeah, we're going to call this the code node. Code node children. Slice negative one. Man. There we go. Good grief. Element content. Uh, code node tag. Oh, hmm. Yeah, we'll just do basically all the same stuff right here. Try that on for size. Okay, so then we get our last line. And it's saying children's always going to be there. So that's great. If last line dot. Um, hmm, what is last line? Oh, yeah. What do we got there? Dot data. Hmm. Hmm. We what we need to do is say code node first child. Yes, that's right. Okay, so because we don't have the concept of lines yet. So um, <laughs> so then we get our first child or um, this is our code string node. Um, will that, how does that work? If I say this is, or you know what? Let's just trim it. Yeah. Trim. All right, there we go. I think that is, um, and then return. What did it skip? No, we don't want to skip it anymore. We want it. We just, yeah, that's it. That's all we're doing. Okay, what are you complaining about? Possibly undefined? Man, I can't wait to close this file. I do not like working in files with unified stuff fresh all right give me a code block boom it's gone hooray this is very good very very good all right happy about that okay cool and we're gonna rename this to trim code blocks. And when that finishes saving, I'm going to close this file. 
And that can be done in this file. Gone. All right. Okay, so um, I don't think this depends on anything um, really. I mean, the transparent background is new, but it's not going to break anything. So what I'm thinking about is when I deploy this or when I push this, the content will get onto the site before the code changes will. And so sometimes if I'm using something in the new content that isn't on the site yet, things will break. Um, and I am, but it will probably be fine. So, uh, no, let's let's deploy the code first. So git add other and app, everything but content. Um, remove or trim code. Um, snippets and posts, and uh, add trans. Parent background option to blog images. I probably not, shouldn't have done no verify, so we'll uh, do invalidate there. Oh, good. Come to my workshop, please. It's going to be so fun. Yeah, look at it hovering around a quarter of a, May, a quarter of a gig. Yes. That feels awesome. I would love, uh, another thing I would love to do eventually is um, deploy my site with bun. That would be sweet. Where am I, what am I looking for? Looking for something. You know what, there is one other thing. Yeah, that's, that's fine. There we go. We'll push that once this deploys. This takes about eight minutes to deploy, which is longer than I want it to be, but yeah, see that took 23 seconds to realize it didn't need to deploy. All the failed ones are the ones that uh, actually probably did deploy. Um, the failures are playwright. I still got to figure out why generating the site cache ends with a error exit code 27. I don't understand it. Yeah, because it finishes just fine. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'll tell you what we're going to do to fix that. We're going to go here. Um, and true, or how do you do that? Um, bash uh, 
ensure commit I think it's or true does not fail yeah or true <laughs> make curl command log not fail or ignore ignore curl blog failure okay we'll push that up once this is done how long does it build normally take last one took four minutes that involved a change in the package JSON I think without changing that we can use the cache maybe Okay, build finished. Now we're deploying. And what we should see with this is uh, the compile stuff um, is finished. Um, let's see. Um, here, this will have some. Oh, yeah, my site is deploying. Yeah, there's downtime. I need to um, need to figure out how to avoid that downtime during deploys. That's really annoying. So you see, we've got those extra lines there. Um, that's because we need to recompile this to get that update. So fresh. I I can do that. You can't do that, but I can. So now those lines are gone, and. It'll take a couple days. I think it's actually two weeks now. I should probably reduce that back down to a day or two for the blog posts to recompile. Um, but it's not really all that important, so I'm fine with waiting a couple weeks. But that'll be really nice. Okay, cool. So let's push this up now. And we will get, this will actually probably get canceled, but this will deploy in about seven seconds. And boom, it's done. So now I go to blog and there it is, 14 minute read. Yeah, baby. I love that image. That's a sweet image. Photo by Jonathan Pye. Cool. What's the alt on this thing? I don't remember writing that alt. Yeah, I didn't write the alt. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so that this is the memory tab of Chrome DevTools. 
showing a heap snap shot on the stati statis statistics view with 358159 kilobytes of typed arrays being a large chunk of a total of five seven three three two nine kilobytes all right add um correct alt text all right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yep there it is twelve seconds from me um yep changing it can your blog do that it might be able to if you're using a regular cms and uh, like a regular blog platform but most developers have to rebuild their site to get an update and i just think this is awesome Oops, there it goes. I just dropped my rubber duck. Yeah, check it out. Light mode. Look at those screenshots. They look amazing. You're welcome, world. All right. Sick. So sick. All right. Um, good. I'm ready to tweet about this. Hold on. It's been such a long time since I've written a blog post that I've tweeted about. I forgot how I normally do it. Yeah, you know what? Had a pretty gnarly... Um, memory leak in my app for a couple of months and I've finally fixed it. Read all about it in my latest blog post. You know why we don't do threads? Because you can't edit threads and that's really annoying. I don't understand why. So we're not gonna do a thread. Shout out to Mateo for all the help. All right, how's that OG image come along? Look how big that URL is. See, that's why I was proxying it, because this URL is ridiculous. Can you believe that? That is crazy, but it works, so. That looks good. It's pretty cool. Oh, my break is almost over. Whoops. Let's, uh, let's increase that to five minutes again, and we're going to take a break. So, see you all in five.
still running we had a little bump here i'm not sure what caused that could have been when i um made a or compiled one of the blog posts possibly because that spins up another process that has shiki in there but that should spin down after 60 seconds of not being used so that hopefully will come back down um, but looks like we're doing okay we had a little spike of firecracker usage Yeesh. Starting to freak me out. Looks like it came right back down though. Very different from what we were doing before. Very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, anyway, feeling good about this. That must have been when I tweeted. Yeah, probably. That would make sense bunch of people go into my site actually we could probably look at uh, uh, people reading it right now yeah there are 94 people normally what did we see earlier it was like 23 people mm -hmm. 77 on this new blog post so that's cool I just uh, I tweeted it I also sent it uh, to discord and at mentioned everybody so a bunch of people reading it right now We'll find out who finishes it first in the leaderboard, um, or at least which team um, gets it read first. And maybe if they've connected their Discord account, then it'll be who as well. So anyway, good stuff. So here's the trick. Now I've got two blog posts that I have not um, included in my newsletter. Um, so this one and 
Yeah, this is the last one that was in the newsletter. So this one and this one, these two. Um, I didn't include this one yet because I hadn't finished the memory leak one and I just didn't feel great about that um, because it, it's not actually deployed to multiple regions yet and that's kind of the idea is that it's distributed SQLite. Right now it's not distributed. And I want to wait until next week probably before actually dis um, publishing it uh, or uh, making multiple regions. Um, Okay, so the question is, in my newsletter, what order do I put these posts in? Um, I think that I'm actually not going to put the Postgres one in the post yet. We're gonna wait till next week um, when I actually go multi-region and I'll put them in reverse order um, just cause I wanna make sure that I do actually get SQLite distributed, uh, deployed and running first. So that's the goal. So um, we're gonna go with this, fixing a, a memory leak in a production Node.js app. Hello there. I've been doing a bit of work on my personal website and I ran into a bit, uh, yeah, big <laughs> um, issue with a memory leak. Memory leaks are never very fun to deal with, especially on the server. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, especially on the server at scale. Ah, yellow team won first. Congratulations. Congratulations on snagging the first read. Um, but what's cool about this one is you get a look into um, mine uh, with um, photos of the, uh, yeah, um, get a good look into mine. My site gets hundreds of thousands of page views a month um, and operates under fairly heavy loads at times. So it's cool. Here, let's just double check that we're doing okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're doing just fine. Um, we do have a, a bit of a spike in traffic, so um, the fact that we're still sitting under 300 is great. I don't know why it's 472 when I scaled it to 512. So I'll have to ask. In fact, I'm going to ask that right now. What is that? 472.8? 
Is that what it was? Yeah. Alright. So here's something cool. We can see that yellow team snagged it first. We have 18 people who have read it so far. And it looks like only the yellow team has finished. Not anybody from the other teams has finished yet. Uh, to see a real world production application. Uh, step by step uh, analysis of a memory leak in a real world production application. Here's a spoiler alert. Or a spoiler for you. And we're gonna put a link to um, the conclusion. Uh, give me a WebP. I need a PNG, I think. We'll see what, what this does with that. And it always messes up the resolution really bad. They do the weirdest things. Curious how I brought this thing down. Check it out here. This memory leak made my app um, um, perform or feel pretty uh, slow and uh, um, crash about once every day or two. Hugely annoying. And like all good memory leaks, there was um, more than just one problem. Okay, great, we'll call this one active and save it. There we go. Tomorrow, a bunch of people are gonna get that. Uh, okay, good, one other thing I just noticed I take great pride in knowing that um, the memory leak code wasn't anything I wrote. Pride is probably the wrong word, like uh, comfort or it makes me feel good to know that uh, the code responsible for the memory leaks isn't anything that I wrote myself. One little, uh, uh, little change. 
page. It doesn't really matter. Nobody's going to read these. All right, sweet. Here we go. We're going to do this. And record. And come back down. All right, that's good. I'm gonna tweet this. You know, I could probably turn this blog post into a TikTok and it would be interesting. I'm actually thinking about making it a YouTube short because I'm not on TikTok because I just feel weird about um, the private data privacy problems there. But there we go. All right. Export that. Um, light mode. Did you notice the uh, screenshots um, change with um, the light? Um, Somebody's going to ask me how I did that. They will. It will happen. Okay, so. Um, hey, look at that. Oh, it was canceled. Well, that actually makes sense. Yeah, because. Oh, man. <laughs> uh. There we go. Play right past. Yes. Here we go. So we just ignore the curl issues, whatever. And then the playwright test can run. And then, oh, hmm. Or flaky. Okay, well, that's all right. And then we stuck the um, the cache in a cache, and so now this will run three minutes faster, or so, give or take. Yeah, cache. 
caches. Here we go. Site cache. Boom. Yay. Oh, yeah. Probably shouldn't uh, look at that on stream. That would be rude. Hey, we're up to 300 megs. I might have to go up to a gig. Let's be honest. Maybe. Okay, I think... I think we're done with the blog post about the memory leak. Um... Just trying to think if there was anything else I needed to do about that, but I think I'm done. Um, so I'm going to check that off. And then I'm going to... Um, let me think. You know what? I'm going to do one other thing I've been wanting to do for a really long time. And that is add um, some sort of option on here to sort by... Um, how many times something's been read. I'm getting a phone call. You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to end the stream and I'll start up again. Um, that'll be an epic web live stream. So thanks everybody. We'll see ya.